Okay, I'm here, I'm ready, I studied, I followed all of Anna Mascara's advices, and this exam is gonna be the best exam ever. So, let's begin. Name. Huh. Oh, fact. Exams ain't no friend. But don't worry, because Granny Anna has made her fair share of mistakes and she wants you to learn from them. So get comfy, get cozy, and let's begin today's video, which is all about five exam mistakes that you should avoid. So listen up, because ain't nobody want to lose points on them exams, yo. Number one, expect the unexpected, aka scanning. Now I know the first thing that goes through your mind when we receive that exam in front of you is getting the most done in the time we have. So you're rushed, you're freaking out, and you start blatantly with question numero uno. However, it has happened to me on multiple occasions that at the end of the exam, on that last page, at the back of the page, there was, surprise, surprise, a business case, which was worth more than the entirety of the exam where I spent most of my time because I didn't look it over when I received it. I was like a box of chocolates and when you're in exam, the box of chocolates is a case study at the end of the exam and it's worth 70% of your marks. So don't do that. Take literally 30 seconds when you get that exam and just flip through it to see what's to come. It's gonna give you a better visual of how you can adjust your time. Basically, instead of, you know, making it rain, Make it flip, you know, and make me a meme because it's about that time, eh, chaps? Right now. Number two, the passive trap. Remember all of that jazz that I've been blabbering to you about for the past 100 videos saying that you need to be active when you study, you need to be active when you read? Well then, yo, why aren't you active when you take an exam? Please, if you have the chance, if you have this option to write on your exam, not even like highlighters, if you're not allowed to use color or highlighters, your pencil, your pen, and just underline or like, you know, circle key words in that question. Does it makes the information pop out? Everything you highlight, underline, or circle will act as a cue to your brain. It has to be like the matrix. You know when Neo's just like seeing a bunch of numbers going down the screen? Well, that's us during the exam. Be Neo, okay? And just extract those key pieces and burst Mr. Anderson in an exam, because winning. Number three, when you didn't answered the question, which refers back to my previous points, you haven't been actively looking at your questions, but bottom line is, sometimes, and most specifically in long answer exams, or like I said, business cases that you have to analyze and look at all the details, the biggest mistake we make is we do not answer the question. We're just so distracted and we blatantly start writing up our answers, like, yeah, 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 I know what it means, and. I'm just gonna start writing and we just, you know, go round and round in circles. She comes and we don't answer the question when she comes and then the teacher rates us poorly and we're very upset and you get an FR exam because you didn't answer the question. Plan your intro, the points you want to make and your conclusion after you've read the question. Another side tip for bonus points during a long answer question in an exam is if you can fit theories, concepts, keywords, formulas in your answer that you learn from the class that you are confident that you are able to apply and integrate in your answer effectively, please do so. And you know what? Underline them so the teacher can see it. This showcases that you're not just like answering a question based on like like YOLO life and what you know as an individual, but you actually we're listening in class and are able to apply the theories taught during the class or from your textbook actively. Teachers love that, okay? They turn to mush and they're like, it warms their heart, so do it. But first and foremost, plan your answer, structure your answer, and then answer the question. Number four, as opposed to that, when you just blatantly don't know the answer to a question, which has happened to me that I didn't know the answer to question number one, question number three, question number four, 
And question number five, because, you know, I've seen some stuff, flashbacks. In that case, my best advice to you is to skip them. If you don't know the answer to first questions, skip them, return to them later, because you want to keep your motivation and your self-esteem to the highest you can possibly keep it throughout the entire exam. If you waste all your time panicking on that first question and you're like, oh my God, if I don't know this first one, I'm doomed. I used to circle the questions that I didn't answer or put a question mark on questions I wasn't sure of my answer and I wanted to come back to at the end. Do a first pass of the exam. The answers to the questions you weren't sure about or you had no idea what they were talking about can be hidden throughout the exam or other parts of the exam can act as a cue and then your mind is like, oh yeah, that was associated to that and that and that, which brings me back to question number one, which, oh yeah, that's the answer. And finally, number five, which might seem like, duh, Anna, however, I've been a teaching assistant and I know that not everyone does it. When we're stressed out, when it's an exam, Cleanliness just, it looks like the dog ate your exam and drooled all over it and I don't understand anything you've written. Why, oh why, do you expect the teacher to try to like decipher coding that you answered your questions in? Keep it clean. You lose marks unnecessarily when you don't. Also, bonus tip for people that are answering algebra, fractions, math, chemistry, don't just blatantly write the answer and do the problem in your mind. Because what can happen is you can lose track of where you're at or you can make just a silly mistake and write a six instead of an eight and your point is completely gone. What I used to do when I used to do chemistry is I wrote down all my steps, all my thought process. Why? Because guess what? Teachers give half marks. Teacher gives point for A for effort, but literally they do. They give you points for applying the formula correctly. And when you're this close and the answer is wrong, they're like, oh, maybe she rushed and you know, she's nine out of 10. Or you know what? Even five out of 10, it's still points that you're just not taking advantage of. We need to save all the points. Like a hamster, just show them in your cheek and just be like, I got the point. No sex jokes, please. Unless they're funny, then go ahead. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to give this video a, a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to me if you like what you see because I post videos every Thursday. And Granny Anna, over and out.